Remember, this has 5,000 plus lines of transactions, and we did this replacement with just one line of code. Let's say Ms. M's Perfect Pizza's accounting system needed a serious update. The new system requires the current product codes to have these letters after the code. The last three codes were created after the new system was implemented, so we have these eight that need to be updated. And the data that needs to be updated with the new product codes are these 5,000 plus lines of sales transactions. And Ms. M's Perfect Pizza has no idea how to do this. But you will. I've imported our sales data table and updated codes table into Power Query. So we need to update the codes here in our product ID column in our sales data table with the codes from the new column here in our updated codes table. Let's go back to our sales data table and remove the change type step as we can perform this at the end. Next, let's click on the add column tab and click on custom column. A custom column allows you to add a new column to a table with a custom formula that you define. Let's call this new column product ID new. What we want to do is perform a lookup between the codes in our product ID column here in our sales data table and the codes in our current column which are here in our updated codes table. Then wherever the codes are the same, we want to return the new codes. So almost like a VLOOKUP or XLOOKUP. First, let's bring in the codes from our current column in the updated codes table. The equal sign is automatically generated. So let's type updated codes and the IntelliSense brings it up. This is the name of our table and the column that we want is the current column. Remember, columns are in square brackets. And let's click OK. And we get the entire list of our current codes returned in each row. Now we need to tell Power Query only return the code if it equals the code here in our product ID column. So let's go back to our custom column and let's type equals and let's select the product ID column from the right here in our available columns and hit OK, and false is returned. Why? This is because we are asking Power Query to compare the values from our product ID column, which has one single value, to the entire list of our current codes that were returned here in each row. So these two columns will definitely not agree. What we can do is instead of returning the entire list of all the codes, Let's ask Power Query to return only the record where our current column in our updated codes table agrees to our product ID column in our sales data table. Let's go back to our custom column to return a record. We need to remove this n square bracket after current and instead add it here after the n square bracket of product ID. So we're saying where current equals product ID return a record. But the only way Power Query knows to return a record is if we insert the open curly bracket before our first square bracket in our formula and the closed curly bracket at the end of our formula. These curly brackets are called positional operators. See, the BI engineers at Microsoft had a meeting. And in that meeting, they decided that different brackets would be able to perform different tasks. So if you had, for example, this list of codes and you wanted only the data from row one, all you would need to do is click on the FX here in the formula bar so that a new step is inserted. And Power Query references the last step, which is the change type step. Then insert the open curly bracket after change type and the closed one is automatically generated. Inside the curly bracket, type zero as Power Query is zero based. So row zero will give us the record from row one and hit enter and we get our values from row one. So in a record, our column headers become these field names. So current and new. If we wanted the values from row three, let's change the zero to two and hit enter and we get our record from row three. So the BI developers called these curly brackets positional operators. Then in that BI developer meeting, they took it a step further and said, but what if we wanted the data from a specific field in that record? So they decided that when you insert a field name in square brackets, 
it will return just the value for that field. So let's type new here in square brackets and hit enter. And we get only the value from the field called new. The different ways in which you can use brackets in Power Query can be really powerful. If you would like to learn more on them, I highly recommend you watch this video here. I'll leave the link in the description below. So now that we understand how we're going to get our values from each row to be returned, let's go back to our example. But before we get to that, 80% of my viewers are still not subscribed. If you're getting value from this video, I would really appreciate it if you could please hit the subscribe button as this will really help me hit my 2023 goal of attaining 50,000 subscribers. Now let's get back to our video. If we use the same logic here in the curly brackets, where current equals product ID, this will return our record, where our current column equals our product ID column. Let's test this out and hit OK. And we get these records. And if we click to the right of a record, we can see that our current value equals our product ID value, which is what we specified in our curly brackets, or positional operators. We also get these errors but we will get to those in a few minutes. Now to return just the value from our new field, all we need to do is go back into our custom column and type new here in square brackets and hit OK. And hey presto, we get the contents from our new field. And remember the new field is from our updated codes table. Then the rows where the errors were returned are for the new codes that were already in place and we didn't need to replace those. So all we need to do is go back to our custom column and after the equal sign, let's type try and after our new column, type otherwise and let's select the product ID column from our available columns. So we're telling Power Query, try this formula, otherwise return our product ID column and let's hit OK, and our errors disappear, and the value from our product ID column is returned instead of the error, which is correct. You can select the columns that you want to keep, and right-click and select Remove Other Columns, and let's perform a change type step, and you now have updated your codes for your product ID column. Remember, this has 5,000 plus lines of transactions, and we did this replacement with just one line of code. Now we have these prices that we receive on a daily basis, and we want to know what the difference is from the previous day's price to the current day's price. Let's send this to Power Query. Here in our Query Editor, let's remove the change type step as we will perform it at the end. Let's go to the Add Column tab and click on Custom Column. And let's call this new column Price Difference. For our formula, let's select our Price column on the right here and type minus. And let's select our Price column again. But now we need to somehow tell Power Query to minus the previous row. So we need a column to help us with this. Let's cancel this for now. And here in the Add Column tab, let's click on the Index column. And this Index column is what we will use as our helper column. Let's create our custom column again. And let's call it Price Difference. And let's select our Price column minus our Price column again. And let's use a Positional Operator here. We know that Positional Operators are in curly brackets. And let's select the Index column from our available columns and insert a minus one, as we want the previous row's value to be deducted from our current row in the price column. And let's insert the closed curly bracket and hit OK. And we get this error. It says we cannot convert the value to type list. And it shows the same error for the rest of our rows. So when you're performing an operation like adding, dividing, multiplying, etc., and in this case, we're subtracting our values, the values need to be the same. So these values that cannot be converted to a list are here in our price column. So our price column needs to be a list. How do we convert a column to a list? We need to go to our last step before our custom column step, which in this case is our added index step. 
So let's click on it to select it. And here in the formula bar, let's click on the FX so that a new step is added. And Power Query references our last step, which is the added index step. This is the sequence in which M code works. It always references the last step when a new step is added. Let's type price here in square brackets and hit enter. And we have our price column converted to a list. So let's copy this code and let's X out this custom one step as we don't need it anymore. And let's go back to our custom column step and let's paste the code that we just copied over the second price. So now this code will convert our price column to a list. Let's hit OK and hey presto, we get our price differences. But we get this error here. As remember, our position is set to index minus one to get the previous row. And as there's no previous row here, we will get this error. This is easy to fix. Let's go back to our custom column and let's type if at the beginning of our formula and let's select our index column from our available columns and type equals zero, then zero, else our formula is returned. So we're saying if our index column equals zero, which it does in our first row, then return zero, else perform the calculation. And let's hit OK and our error is fixed. We can perform a change type step and keep only the columns that we want. So all we needed was this one line of code and we were able to calculate our previous row's values. For our next example, we want to show only the names of the students that did not make the required pass rate and their test scores. And we want this to be dynamic. So if we change the required pass rate from 90 to 60 and hit refresh, our table updates automatically. Let's see how we can do this. We have our source data in a table format called test score data. And the required pass rate is also in a table format called pass rate. First, let's send the pass rate table to Power Query. Here in the query editor, we will still need to do some quick transformations to this table. But for now, let's send this back to Excel as a connection only. Next, let's send our test score data to Power Query. Now we have our two tables in our query editor. But what we actually want is for our pass rate table to be an object so that we can insert it into our test score data query. Let's remove the change type step as we don't need that. To create the object, right click on the 90 and click on drill down and the value for the pass rate is only returned. And if we look to the left here, we can see that this no longer shows as a table. Instead, it's now an object that we can use. In our test score data query, let's perform a filter step on our test score column. You can filter on any value you like, it doesn't really matter and click on OK. And we have the filtered rows step here in our applied steps. Now we need to assign our pass rate object that we just created here in the filtered row step. So we will do this in our formula bar. Let's delete the value that we just filtered on and start typing pass rate. And the IntelliSense brings it up, click on that and hit enter. And our query updates to show no student names as there were no students that had a pass rate of 90. But we want students that scored less than the pass rate. So in the formula bar, remove the equal sign and replace it with the less than sign and press enter and our table updates correctly. Let's send this back to Excel. Let's test out the automation by changing the pass rate to 75 and hitting refresh and everything works perfectly. Here we have student test scores out of 150. What we need is a report that provides us with the student names that scored below the average and by how much they were below that average. Here's how to do this. I've named this table test score data. Let's send this to Power Query. First, we need to calculate the average. So let's select the test score column and in the transform tab, click on statistics and click on average. And just the average of those test scores is returned and not our table, as this was a data transformation that was used performing a list function. 
We do, however, still need to perform more transformations on our table, so we need to get the table back. The last step that returned our table was here in the change type step. So all that we need to do is click on the calculated average step so that it's selected. Then here in the formula bar, we're going to click on the fx to insert a step. And it returns our last applied step, which is the calculated average. But as we want our table to be returned and we know that the change type step was the last step to return our table, let's start typing change type. And the IntelliSense brings it up and select that and press enter and we get our table back. Let's rename this step. I'm going to rename this to get table back. You can call it whatever you like. Before we move on to the next step, I just want to remove the space in the calculated average step as this is going to help us in our next step. Next, in the add column tab, click on custom column and here is where we will calculate test scores that are either below or above the average. Let's call this column below average. Next, let's double click on test score to include this in our formula and insert a minus. The value that we want to subtract is the average that we calculated here in calculated average. But we don't have calculated average as an available column. So what we can do is type it out here and click on OK. And we have our calculations showing by how much the students were either above or below the average. Let's change this to a whole number and filter on all the values that are below zero. And that's what our report shows, all students that are below the average. Let's send this back to Excel. Let's add some new data here and hit refresh and our query updates automatically based on the new average.